because uh, we are not uh, picking two points. We are picking multiple points and then we are picking the ellipse. And a square grid analyzer, we proposed again two algorithms here, a transform with clustering and a project to collination method. I will briefly tell what are these methods. And in full field stain analysis, we have 2D DIC and 3D DIC. We have done some preliminary studies on 2D DIC. I will just show what we have done in 2D DIC. And this 3D DIC is our future work. Now coming to the hardware development, uh, first thing is we need to have some hardware to capture the deformed grid, right? For this, what we have done is we used a USB microscope. But the reason for using USB microscope is it is having inbuilt LED, so I need not provide external uh, light source for illuminating the surfaces that I want to measure or from the surface I want to capture the grids. So what I have done in this uh, USB microscope is uh, general USB microscope will come with the end cap. We removed that end cap and we have done some uh, uh, trial and trial experiments and finally decided what should be the length and what should be the opening diameter. We printed this uh, end caps with the different opening diameters. Why we printed with the different opening diameters? Because the part may have different curvatures. To accommodate our different curvatures, we use end caps with the different opening diameters 5 mm end cap, 10 mm end cap, 20 mm end cap. Based on this opening diameter, the height of this end cap is also changing. These are the end caps. If we, we attached these end caps to the commercially available USB microscope, and then we captured the images. These are the captured images. Then we converted into binary images for edge detection. Then we observed some noise. Then what we thought is let us change the uh, lighting system. Instead of using existing uh, LED lights, let us uh, create a side lighting. Then we use the side lighting. We observe that uh, there is a reduction in noise. Okay, so this is how it will look with side lighting. We modified our end cap and uh, we attached this LED light on the side. Okay, and this is the existing eight LED ring. We removed this eight LED ring, which is uh, already there in the USB microscope. And we removed it and we attached our own LED light and we made necessary connections to get the power from existing uh, Power, so, uh, power, because already this 8 LED, it will get the power, right? From the same thing, we are also getting power for our LED light. So this is the final uh, different steps how to make this end cap with side lighting. And then uh, this is how it will appear, okay, enlarged view. This is the device which we are using. And these are the steps how to capture the images. This is the USB microscope. We removed the existing end caps and LED lights. If you want to use uh, without side lighting, you need not remove. You can just print these end caps and you can attach. These are the end caps with side lighting. Then we assemble this thing. This is how you can keep this uh, uh, over the component that you want to capture the images. Once you capture the images, you need to upload into the software. Just a single click, it will give the major axis length and minor axis length. So this entire work is uh, accepted uh, in the journal Hardware X, very nice journal. Uh, we got special invitation to share our hardware. So we shared our complete hardware details and you can refer uh, this paper in Hardware X. The details are provided at the end of this presentation. And this is we and also we use a two different uh, microscope. This is a generic USB microscope. We are calling it a generic USB microscope. And this has a GSAS USB microscope. Generally, it is used for inspection applications. So this is also one kind of inspection. So we use a similar kind of microscopes which are used for inspection. And we made necessary modification. And this is the commercial device. I am saying a grid pattern analyzer. This is the commercial device. You can see this is the commercial device. And these are the hardware that we developed. Now coming to the circle grid analyzer, uh, we use two algorithms. One is arc support line segment method. This is uh, different steps in arc support line segment method. And we prepared the program in uh, MATLAB and we created a very nice user graphical user interface for easy use of this software. And coming to the least square method, once you capture the image, we will convert that into grayscale image. Then we will pick five points. Once you pick five points over the edge, automatically the ellipse will be fitted. Its major axis length, minor axis length will be displayed. And based on this length, the strains will be calculated. OK, this is the least square method. This is how the graphical user interface will appear. 
you can see first before to use the software we need to calibrate so initially let us say you printed 3 mm diameter circle you capture the image of that uh, circle and you upload here once you, here load button is there click on load button then the image will be displayed here automatically it will show uh, the di dimensions of this once you load it it will it will fit an ellipse but it is a circle that means major axis length and minor axis length will be same so you need to just uh, it will show in the beginning it will show the pixel then you enter the value what is the diameter of the circle in mm then you convert the pixels into mm from next time onwards whatever ellipses that you upload it automatically displays the values in mm so we need to do the calibration at the beginning and the calibration is also very simple so it, once you upload an ellipse just click load and click on select the method whether it is automatic first you select automatic and click measure automatically it will display the ellipse and it will show the major axis minor axis and the dimensions are displayed here in case if it is not automatically detected the ellipse then you select the radio button semi automatic pick five points over this automatically the ellipse will be displayed its major axis length and minor axis length will be displayed here along with this a change will be displayed here if you want to export this data into excel you can ex export using this export to xls and if you want to see the plot you can see here the strain plot and also in this software we also provided uh, different uh, theoretical methods uh, to predict the fld fld is used for evaluating the formability of sheet metal components so there are different uh, methods to plot this FLD theoretically. Those uh, theoretical models also we incorporated in this software. Okay, this is a brief description about this uh, software. And uh, what we observed is uh, when we use uh, laser engraved grids, the ellipse, uh, the software is detecting the edges automatically, but it is not able to detect. Uh, the edges of screen printed and electrochemical etching using this arc support line segment algorithm. Then we worked on some other algorithm uh, based on denoising, edge segmentation, and fitting. So we took the original image, grayscale image, denoising. Then we applied ellipse boundary segmented images, then ellipse fitting. Here also you can select either outer edge, inner edge, or mean edge, whichever edge you want. You can select that one by just a simple click in the software. So this is the graphical user interface. This software we developed in Python. And uh, these are different options. You can select the material because whether it is a copper, aluminum sheet, or steel sheet, and which edge you want, you want outer, inner, which edge you want. Then uh, here we also provided uh, some advanced setting tab where you can change the kernel size and canny thresholding and what kind of uh, circles these are. These are intersected circles like this or sometimes there may be gap between the circles, so what kind of ellipses, and if it is a square grid, you need to click this button. If there are multiple ellipses, if you want to select one particular region, you can use this region selection button. Okay, this is the user interface of this second software, and we tested this with the screen printed grids, and it is detecting with 100% efficiency this particular algorithm. And coming to the square grid analysis, again in square grid analysis, we propose two algorithms. Okay, one is uh, this uh, project to collination method. In this project to collination method, this is the sequence of steps we follow. First, we will upload the image. Then you have to select the four corners of the ellipse. Uh, sorry, four corners of the parallelogram. Once uh, you print a square grid and if you deform, it becomes a quadrilateral. So you have to select the four corners of the quadrilateral. That means initial square became a quadrilateral. That means there is a, some transformation is happening. So we have to find out what is the transformation matrix. You know the original coordinates and you it is transformed into a quadrilateral and you are picking the four corners. That means indirectly you are telling the deformed coordinates also so we need we can calculate the transformation matrix this uh, everyone of you know so once you get a transformation matrix uh, we it uses a five point method to fit a maximum size ellipse within that quadrilateral okay this is the basic idea in project to collination method okay and uh, instead of picking the four corner points is there any way just like we have done in case of square 
circular grid where we detected the ellipses automatically is there any way to detect the corners also automatically and fit the ellipse yes the, for that we we used a different uh, uh, code we developed using hug transform and clustering this is a square deformed grid then color space conversion gaussian blurring and worsu binarization we have done then we applied some more classical operations then contour detection then we applied hug transform then using k means cluster we identified the four corners then we then check for four lines it checked for four lines then it will take intersection points automatically in case if it is uh, not able to detect the four lines then we use project to pollination method if it is detected then automatically the ellipse will be fitted this is the overview of this algorithm then uh, project to pollination method which is semi automatic method we implemented in uh, matlab and uh, this is how you have to click four corner points of this uh, square deformed quadrilate uh, deformed square then automatically the ellipse will be fitted because in this uh, case it is very difficult uh, uh, to pick the major axis length and minor axis length of the ellipse because we don't have the ellipse right so here it is mandatory to fit the ellipse so it automatically fit the ellipse and it will give the major axis length and minor axis length and uh, remaining uh, gui is same just we need to select square grid uh, that's it next one is uh, that the automatic uh, fitting in square grid we implemented in python and uh, just upload the image you need not pick the corners it automatically fit the ellipse maximum size ellipse within that quadrilateral and uh, it will measure the major axis length minor axis length and it will evaluate the strengths this is about uh, the second uh, algorithm so square, circle grid analysis we propose three different algorithms and uh, in square grid analysis we propose two algorithms it is not only developing the hardware and software it is very important to validate the developer system so we validated in different ways so let us uh, discuss how we validated the developer system what we have done is we printed the ellipses of known dimensions in different orientations we printed uh, on different metal sheets because you may use a uh, copper sheet steel sheet or aluminum sheet any sheet you may use during the forming so this system should be robust to detect uh, the deformed grids on any kind of metal sheet right so we printed on different metal sheets in different orientations both filled and unfilled ellipses and then we captured the images these are the captured images you can see and uh, we fitted the ellipses using the proposed software you can see here it automatically fitted the ellipses and it measuring the major axis even in case of filled ellipses okay these are the steps capturing the images and then all the steps we explained in this flow chart and these are the error statistics of course when you print the initial circle there also may be some errors will be there what we have done is let us say we used one circle and we valid calibrated our system after that we we uploaded 10 more circle images every time it is not giving 3 mm because there will be some error in the printing also this is a error in the printing we also did some study on this uh, deviations in the printed circle diameters okay and then we also compared this with the uh, commercial system that is gpa okay these are the error statistics uh, mostly it will be very very low error one maximum is 1.9 tuck but most of the times the errors are very very low you can see here 8 mm it is showing 8.03 8 mm it is showing 8.074 5 mm 4.915 54968 okay like this these are the major minor axis length and uh, also we have done some uh, this uh, statistical techniques we use to check the hardware and software okay not only measuring the dimensions of um, known ellipses the ellipses of known dimensions we also formed the component what we have done is uh, here earlier already we tested whether this will work on different metal sheets or not now we are not worrying about 
changing the material we print we took one material and what we have done is we printed the grids with electrochemical etching laser engraving and screen printing and we have given different levels of deformation because even it should detect the small deformation and it should detect even large deformation so we deform or we have given different levels of deformation by forming these uh, spherical dome shapes okay then we captured the grids and uh, and uh, we captured these grids using two proposed hardware we used a generic usb as well as gsas and uh, we we also measured with commercial hardware so we compared which hardware is better and both hardwares are uh, doing good so we can use anything and we also compared the printing method is uh, going to have any effect both with the uh, hardware of siege the generic hardware with the gpa and gsas hardware with the gpa gpa is a commercial one and generic and gsas are the hardware which we develop and these are the some of the correlation coefficients you can see very good correlation was formed between the measured values with the different combinations like this we validated and so whatever a square circular grid algorithms and other things whatever we discussed it was published in journal of strain analysis and uh, uh, another algorithm of circular grid analysis we submitted to computer integrated manufacturing which is under review and this validation results we published in uh, process mechanical engineering those who are interested they can refer those papers for more details okay and also we filled uh, uh, filled circles i didn't show filled circles also we can we printed even small diameter of 1 mm also we printed and we measured using this proposed hardware and software so we tested in all possible ways you can see here this is only circle this is square this is what we have done is square and circle we printed both okay because we are fitting maximum size ellipse that maximum size ellipse is matching with the deformed ellipse or not so that kind of study also we have done uh, so it is a very good uh, learning experience to us and uh, we it gave us confidence that we can also develop this kind of systems instead of using this uh, stereo microscope or traveling microscope we can also use this kind of uh, devices now coming to the dic 2d dic this is also very interesting work and uh, 2d dic commercial systems are there but we thought we approach we made a different approach it is also very good experience what we have done is all of you know in 2d dic we have to apply a speckle pattern and uh, instead of using a commercial camera we try to use a mobile camera because nowadays mobile cameras uh, are coming with very good configurations right the camera magnifications are very high so we thought to use uh, a mobile camera for capturing the images once you capture the images we analyze the captured images using a open source uh, software like mcart we use mcart there are uh, many softwares okay many softwares so because you are all in education field uh, better to use this open source softwares we have to teach to our students also this open source software because it is free and we can do many experiments with that so here smartphone camera we use to capture the images and we process these images using uh, ncar software which is open source so first uh, first thing is we have to apply the speckle pattern just like we are applying their grids here we are applying the speckle pattern there are some good practices while applying the speckle pattern uh, depending upon how nicely you apply speckle pattern Uh, that decides the final results so we applied first we applied the black paint and then over that we sprinkled the white paint but uh, it didn't work well and also we didn't provide any background on the back side if you see on the back side of the specimen here you can see one white background okay this background also matters okay. and uh, here what we have done is in the second uh, thing we first we applied the white paint over that we sprinkled the black one here we applied black one and then we sprinkled white one in these two cases and here we provided the black background here we provided the white black ground uh, background here white background and this is black uh, background uh, in these cases uh, uh, the results are coming properly 
now this is the video first we record the video you have to convert that video into images and those images we need to crop it and then we will upload to this mcar software and it will give the strains in x direction and y direction okay this is uni axial tension test and aluminium double one double zero we have done this test you can see here this is the original specimen this is about the necking it is about to fracture you can see the enlarged image you can also see at the same location the strains are very high so it is able to detect strains properly and how can you say that these results are good so for that what we have done is uh, we prepared the uh, samples with the different geometries which are notch specimen uh, specimen flat specimen with central hole and this kind of uh, cross cut for shear and simple tension so like this we have taken different uh, geometries and we have done we applied the speckle pattern here already speckle pattern is applied and we have done the tensile test uh, sorry uni axial tension test we have done so what we have done is uh, this is the load displacement curve that is obtained from the extensometer and uh, this uh, dashed line is uh, the load displacement curve from dic okay so it is uh, predicting very nicely in all the cases you can see there is no deviation so this is uh, able to predict very nicely and also you can see the correlation coefficient of the strains measured from the extensometer and the strains obtained from dic we plotted on the extensometer strains on x axis and dic strains on y axis so uh, we found very good correlation this is what we have done on 2d dic still this work is uh, going on we have not yet completed it is uh, in progress and uh, what we are uh, planning for future is uh, 3d dic so this is a uh, two setups we are planning this is turn table this is the formed component and this is the camera when uh, it uh, captures the images and uh, from those images we are planning to use some open source software to analyze the strains with the grades with the speckle pattern we have different ideas to explore and instead of single camera using multiple cameras and uh, measuring the strains in static conditions that means post forming measuring are in dynamic uh, strain measurement that means during the forming itself it will capture multiple images and at different points of forming how the strains are changing uh, that is uh, that is what we are thinking and that is our future goals now these are the those who are interested they can uh, refer this one cga and image processing based software for surface strain analysis in sheet metal forming this is published in journal of strain analysis a low cost surface strain measurement system using image processing for sheet metal forming applications this is published in measurement a compared to study on effect of grid printing methods and camera hardware in automatic strain measurement through cga which is published in process mechanical engineering a portable device for single point strain analysis in sheet metal forming process this was accepted uh, for hardware x and uh, very soon it may come in online and uh, one more algorithm uh, which we use it for a screen printing screen printed grids that is uh, under review this is uh, some of our works in this area and this kind of work it is not possible to do by a single person it is a team effort and we have to acknowledge all the people who contributed in this project starting with my student uh, mr pankas who joined as a jrf in this project and uh, mr tejas uh, from electronics department who worked on uh, arc support line segment method and uh, mr sriram from mechanical department uh, who worked on square grid analysis and uh, mr guru from electronics department who worked on developing the hardware with side lighting and uh, he also worked on developing the software for screen printed grids and we have a couple of faculty members uh, professor sudha radhika from ec department who is expertise in uh, uh, image processing and uh, professor uh, amrita priyadarshini from mechanical department uh, and myself this is uh, our team who worked on this uh, project and uh, this kind of work is not possible without a financial support also and we have a big satisfaction because we have done something useful 
something repeatable, something that can be used by sheet metal uh, community in India. So this is the project sponsored by DST and a device development program. The title of the project is a design and development of image processing based state analysis a system for sheet metal forming applications. Okay. So finally, just I show you small videos so that I can finish my presentation and then it will be open for discussion. I hope that a video is visible to all of you. Hello, friends. Today I'm going to explain our development software. That is visible, sir. This software is provided with the hardware. Hello. So we have modified the USB microphone. Yes, sir. It's visible, sir. Uh, sir. Okay, thank you. Capturing the images of a uh, uh, deformed grids uh, at a different curvature. So we modified this uh, hardware in here by applying the side lighting to reduce down the noise level of the image captured by the hardware. And to accommodate the different curvature, we have used the different end cap. So this is the 20 mm end cap, 5 mm end cap, and 10 mm end cap. This is the all about hardware. Now we have developed the graphical user interface of this uh, this software. This is the uh, image window where we need to call the uh, image by clicking on the browse image button. The person can directly use the uh, video feed also from the camera hardware. And these are the settings we need to perform initially. Similarly, the first step uh, while measurement, we need to uh, calibrate the software for a conversion of the pixel data into PMM. And this is the data frame where we need to save the data uh, by clicking the add data button. The person can save the data in Excel format also. If the ellipse is not treated properly, the person can go for the add-on setting tab. This is about the uh, graphical user interface. Now, where we are going to use this software? We are going to use this software in a forming application, sheet metal forming application. We know that the sheet are going to be formed in a different curvature, different shapes after a, a forming operation like a stamping, uh, hydro forming, incremental. So here we have put the one example of incremental forming. We printed a circular grid of 1M one uh, one size on the sheet and we deform this circular grid into the, uh, means we form this sheet into the hemispherical dome. So we found that this circle becomes an ellipse. So we have to measure the or we have to inspect the screen at the different location of this form component. So that can be measured by using our software. So this mainly we are using for the sheet metal forming application. In this software, the first step is of calibration. First of all, person has to perform the calibration. To perform the calibration, person should know the dimension of the grid. So I have created a database where I have, I have kept the reference image, the 3 mm circular grid. So I am calling this image, loading this image in image window. After loading, we should set the material i know that this material is the steel material i want the green diameter so i'm selecting the green diameter just need to click on the compute as we are clicking on the compute it will give the dimension in a pixel we need to set this pixel value into the event because we know the dimension of this grid and we have to click on the calibrate as we are clicking on the calibrate the software is calibrated for this particular amount of pixel this is the uh, the software is calculating the average and it is setting as a 3 mm and we are going to use uh, this calibration for the subsequent images for measurement of the strain. The second step in the uh, measurement, uh, strain measurement is the actual measurement of the strain at a different location after calibration. So to perform the actual measurement, we need to call the deformed images. So I already saved these images by capturing to the proposed hardware. Just need to select the uh, one by one image and need to compute the strains at a different location. So we will get a dimension corresponding to the 3 mm and we can calculate the strain at this particular location. Similarly, you can call the other images and set the or set the strain at a different location. Similarly, if you want a location at a different, different location, you can find out the strain at a different location. So this is all about the measurement of the strain. We will get a strain at a different location. 
Now, if someone wants to save this data in Excel format, they can go for the save data. Write down here the file name. And they can import this data in a particular location. Similarly, if someone wants to change the setting, they can change the setting by clicking on the advanced tab button. Here, a person can change the kernel size. Then uh, you can set the uh, threshold value, uh, minimum value and maximum value. By default, it is 0 and 60. This, uh, this uh, earlier I have used the ellipses of intersect, that's why this button is clean. If it is of single ellipse, then uh, means it is not connected with another ellipse, then you have to uncheck this one. Person can select the region of interest in the images also. This is a select region of interest. This is all about our circle grid analysis. I hope you understand what I know. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That's it. My presentation. I think 10 minutes is there for question and answers. So if you have any questions, answers, any suggestions, most welcome. Uh, good morning, Kura, sir. Hello. Yes, yes, yes please. Uh, this is Dr. Banadegrin from SNHT only. So I have some two queries only. The first one is, uh, can we find the formability of the material through the simple tensile test? That is the first one. And the second one is, can you can we find the, the N value, that is a strain uh, hardening component from the FLD diagram? Is it possible? These are the two queries from my side. <laughs> so it is an indirect way of asking. Uh, so what, see, how do you check whether the material is stretchable or not? How can Depends we on the check? N value. So, because that is a stain hardening exponent is the measure of the stretchability of material. Okay, based on the n value, we will tell whether it is uh, formable or not. And uh, in fact, n is itself an indication of your formability, stretchability of the material. And second thing uh, you are telling from FLD, can I find n? If you know the FLD, the intersection, for example, here, theoretically speaking, I think somewhere I put a FLD, let me show. Theoretically speaking, the y-intercept is nothing but n value. So this one, if you see here, this point is nothing but n. Theoretically, it should intersect approximately. Under plane strain condition, right? This is. And a plane strain condition, this value is equal to n. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. is Thank it? you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, and one more thing, one more thing even from tensile test, also some people are plotting the FLD. Okay, uh, but uh, they use a DIC with a DIC. You have combined tensile test with the DIC, and uh, I think. Uh, uh, this uh, mighty uh -huh, I forgot his name. Yeah, it, it can it is possible. You can see from tensile test combining with the DIC, they use it to plot FLD curves. But whatever you are asking, uh, strain hardening exponent is the measure of stretchability, and uh, if n is more, that means uh, the material is more stretchable. And uh, aluminium, for example, if you look at the aluminium, even though it is a ductile material. Uh, but uh, the formability is less, I hope you know, uh, because the number of slip planes are less, because plastic deformation occurs either because of slipping or uh, twinning. That is why when aluminum is heated to elevated temperatures, the slip planes will increase and it will uh, deform. That is why people generally form aluminum at elevated temperature. Even though it is a good ductile material, its N value is less and uh, number of slip planes are less at room temperature and they will form at elevated temperature. And uh, we can also correlate N with FLD. My second question, you can also correlate N with FLD, the y-intercept are under plane strain condition, that strain is equal to your N value theoretically. Yes. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you, sir. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, good yes. morning, uh, Dr. Suresh, sir. Yeah, this is Venkat, Venkat, Venkat Narayana from Srinidhi, Professor Mechanical Department. Hello, sir. How are you, sir? Oh, fine, sir. Fine, sir. I'm Very really, nice to be here. 
very 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 happy sir uh, uh, you were preparing like an alternative equipment for uh, commercial dic uh, yeah. it's a uh, after your presentation right really no uh, yes i also remembered uh, before you join in srinidhi you told me that you are in deep drawing also yeah yes sir Yes, yes, sir. yes. Sir. Uh, okay. General question I'll ask you, sir. How much cost, sir? Uh, your uh, equipment uh, uh, What cost? Uh, hardly five thousand, six thousand. Oh. Okay. Only thing is here the knowledge is important. The software at what cost we want to put our software. It is the software, right? The hardware it is not going to cost. Much. So I think it's a more important. But uh, what we are thinking is. Uh, Maybe in Indian market, if we want to sell it two to three lakh. Okay. So is it is it mobile, sir? Uh, you can uh, just like that. We can take this particular device and uh, uh, take this particular images uh, uh, wherever it is required, no, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, you can not only image, is even it, in line, it, in line. That means video. Just when you put it, that time also it will display within that graphic area. That time also you can measure. You need not take images. Of course, in Python, uh, whatever Python GUI is there, even video also uh, you can use. And uh, in MATLAB, we have to capture the images and we are using those images. We are uploading those images. Yeah, we can take it anywhere and we can measure. Yes. So I have, I have used one particular commercial DIC. Commercial? Commercial DIC system, which is uh, inbuilt with this particular uh, uh, buckling test, sir. Buckling uh -huh. test of uh, different components, sir, uh, the shells and all that. But uh, oh. it, it is costing around, I think, uh, if I remember, 5 crores total emission with this particular DIC. See, yeah, because uh, this uh, DIC systems, we are also asking for 3D DIC systems for sheet metal farming. They will put around seven five lakh or something like that. It is very expensive, but uh, yes. we can work. That is how because even though it is available worldwide in India, we don't have so. That is my way of thinking. Okay, it is there. What is new? It is not like that. Let us uh, make it indigenous. Let us develop. These are all developed very long back. Already patents also expired. So why can't we try something on that and let us develop and use it? Congratulations uh, for uh, giving such thank a wonderful structure and the development also, sir. Really, I'm very happy to see you and happy to okay listen your uh, uh, little voice, sir. Thank you. We'll meet. Thank you. Thank you to see all of you from Srinidhi. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions from the participants? Okay, thank you, Dr. J. Karan, for making all the arrangements for today's session. Thank you. Yeah, I should yes. thank you, sir. In fact, I should thank you. You have given a fantastic uh, uh, presentation, and you have uh, you have uh, a lot of work you have did. In uh, I, I hope definitely it took uh, years for you, and I have presented it in just uh, forty-five minutes, uh, and you made us to learn everything. Thank you very much for that, and I should appreciate your efforts also, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very thanks much. Thanks to all the participants uh, for patiently listening, whatever I told today. Yeah. Thanks Thank to you, all. Sir. Okay.